Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of IADA for inviting me to talk today at this conference, and I hope you'll find my presentation interesting. In a world where climate change is at the forefront of discussions, museums can play a positive role in supporting the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. To achieve this, it is increasingly important that sustainability is embedded in the conservation and preservation decisions that we make. Some would argue that conservators are well placed to innovate on these particular subjects because our skill set allows us to think creatively, creatively, problem solve and adapt to complex situations. With this in mind, I want to focus on one element, the way we museum professionals display bound books in museums and libraries and how it is proving to be an issue when trying to achieve sustainability goals. I will use the example of the Chester BT display cradles, as well as the results of a survey I undertook in November 2021. The Chester BT is based in Dublin and holds the collection of Sir Alfred Chester BT, with manuscripts, rare books and other treasures from Europe, the Middle East, North Africa and Asia. The museum is accredited and committed to best practice and professional standards, both for preservation of the collection and to a wider extent for the preservation of our environment through acknowledging that sustainable choices needs to be made when selecting new materials, reusing and recycling where possible. Over the next five years, the Chester BT is planning to redevelop its current site. Existing galleries will be reimagined and new exhibition spaces created. So now is the perfect time to start the conversation about how we display our book-based collection, exploring how to improve on existing design and methods to meet our commitment to sustainability goals will be the key to the redesign. When the current exhibition spaces at the Chester BT opened in 2000, aesthetics of the display were at the forefront of the design. The main concept was that the supports should be invisible so that the cradle allows for the book to float in the display. This was achieved by using see-through acrylic cradles, allowing all sides of the book to be seen. This was especially important due to the number of cases that visitors get to walk around, making all four sides visible. 20 years on, we're still using acrylic cradles as they facilitate the original floating aesthetics, but also provide excellent support and protection for the wide range of bound volumes we need to display. Due to the large number of wall cases in the exhibition galleries, the cradles are generally angled to aid visibility and add interest to the display. We use an angle of 30, 30 degrees for most of our cradles, but sometimes we lower the angle to accommodate larger volumes in desk cases. With no, tech, with no technician on staff, we work with external suppliers to create them. One of the unique features of the Chester BT is that it holds a beautiful library collection from all over the world. This means the spine profiles of bound books can vary enormously. Some have characteristic spine profiles of a region, such as the East Asian side zone bindings. Others have a more common rounded or flat spine profile. Our display mainly comprises bound books and single mounted folia and prints. With around 1% of the collection on show at any given time, we are displaying approximately 70 bound books in the museum with every rotation of our permanent galleries. Our cradles are currently made to support a specific spine profile, which generally only works for one opening of the book, give or take 10 to 15 folios at either side of the opening. If a different folio is displayed, then a different cradle with a different spine profile must be made. Each book, but also each opening, requires a new cradle. The lack of adjustability in the angle is another problem, and depending on which case the object is displayed, a lower or higher angle could be needed, and therefore a new cradle might need to, might need to be made. Acrylic cradles are expensive to produce and difficult to reuse. With economics and sustainability and increasing concerns, we want to move towards a more adaptable solution. 
Until then, we can continue working with the existing system and have creating, created a tracking system for the cradles to try to reuse as much of the existing stock as possible. In 2014, we carried out an audit of all the cradles that we had on an Excel spreadsheet, which we now update religiously. In the spreadsheet, we tracked the objects uh, it, was the, it was made for, as well as any other object it had been used for, the overall height, width, and spine dimension, display angles, and simple features which might help to eliminate an unsuitable profile such as um, a side zone sp spine profile, for example. To be, um, to be able to reuse cradles, we track them, label them, and store them in a dedicated, dedicated storage room, which takes up a lot of space. Our tracking system allows us to reuse cradles and reduce 20 to 40 percent of new cradles commission, depending on the exhibition and the budgets available. We can sometimes reuse existing profiles and accommodate, accommodate extra supports, such as foam wedges in the spine area to give the text block and binding the necessary supports using an existing cradle. We sent, recently, we started to track each cradle on our content management system, so it is associated with an individual object number. This system allows us to look for a cradle ma made specifically for each book although not necessarily for a chosen opening. With this system, it is really difficult to look for an existing cradle that, that would work for a different book, so we still rely on our Excel spreadsheet. In order to help the museum move away from this inflexible Perspex cradle system, I decided to start a conversation of an alternative solution and design a survey aimed at understanding the issues faced by book conservators. I asked 10 questions related to book support systems and criteria for their design. I also inquired about the flexibility of the system to be reused for different openings for different books. I received 67 responses after posting on the form a this list in November 2021. The answers to the questionnaire were very helpful and provided a representative sample uh, of the wider museum community. Significantly, it showed that people are interested in this question of book display and sustainability and that there is room to improve. I received some encouraging emails from people actively working on more sustainable, adjustable book display solution. So I'm hopeful systems will be created in the future that will suit the museum professional standards in all their complexity. So let's discuss the survey results. Uh, so in terms of the material used to make cradles, there is an even distribution amongst the, the answers from the participants between those using cards and those using acrylic. 50% of participants answered others, but typically these people use both materials in different contexts. Sometimes, depending on the size of, of the book, they will choose a more supportive material. Other times, depending on the type of exhibition, display and budget budget availabilities, they'll choose a cheaper or more expensive alternative. Uh, some participants gave, gave details of the type of card that they're using, such as corrugated or mount board. Uh, VIVAC, uh, PETG -E plastic, is used a handful of time and offers an interesting alternative to Perspex, as it can be cut directly in the board chopper and shaped cold, but it seems to lack the support necessary for heavier books. A handful of participants, probably from the US, noted that they're using the butterfly book mount by Benchmark. These are acrylic cradles with a brass support, which allows the user to adjust the book angle, uh, but not, well, the, the, the book opening angle, but not the display angle. They are a practical option for smaller bound books uh, being displayed in the desk, in desk cases. When it came to identifying criteria for cradle design, unsurprisingly, almost all participants answered support of the book as their first concern. We need to keep this in mind during any design process taking place as pre preventive conservation of the objects we are working with must always be the priority. 
Aesthetic came second at 58%, which uh, was interesting as this is also a concern for us at the Chesapeake where display needs to look attractive. Ease of setup and sustainability came in joint third with 38% and 34% respectively. And cost and staff time uh, came last. A majority of respondents making card cradles have chosen it for reasons of sustainability. And card is indeed recyclable, uh, but we often prioritize recycling when it comes to being green. However, there's more we should do before recycling. The 6 R pro process gives clear action that should be respectively be taken, if possible, before recycling any products. Recycling comes at the end of the chain as it can be a polluting process. And of course, Perspex is not even currently uh, recyclable. According to the result of the survey, about 78% um, of us try to reuse our cradles uh, where we can and track them to do so. So that's encouraging. At the end of the survey, only one system uh, stood out as being fully adaptable for display with both the opening angle and the display angle adjustable. This system was designed by book conservator Florence Daure and architect Yves Schalcher from the Fondation Bodmer in Geneva. It uses metal as the main component and is fully detachable and adjustable. Using this system has reduced the need for the team to use other supports, except in rare occasions for particularly large fan books. Sustainability is a process, and, a muse and as museum professionals, we must change the way we consume to achieve this goal. We must, we must also take care to avoid so-called greenwashing. For example, is it better to make new supports for the next 20 years and reuse and recycle each of them, or, or purchase a system that may not be completely recyclable, but will be used for the next 20, 30 years? To, to help answer this truthfully, life cycle assessments can be used. LCA is a system that assesses the CO2 emission of a product from ground extraction to manufacture and recycling, otherwise known as cradle to cradle, which is nicely fitting with our discussion today. This can help assess the real impact using different materials can have on the environment. Ideally, what I want to see for our new display at Chester Beatty is a set of cradles that are fully adaptable, that support books of almost all sizes, a cradle which allows for the display angle to change as necessary and for the spine profile to be different and supported. Ease of setup is critical. Whichever system we use needs to be practical to set up safe for the object and not too time consuming for the staff. Ideally, we need something that can be fully disassembled into its component pieces to save on storage space and so that uh, broken pieces can be repaired incrementally as the system ages. Aesthetics must also be considered, considered as we are a museum and our display needs to be attractive as well as educative. Book conservators must work closely with engineer and mount makers to come up with such a design. This would allow us to commission the manufacture of several cradles to support the display of all our books in our permanent galleries, temporary ex exhibition spaces, and for loans as well, without the need to continuously purchase new. The first R in the 6R process is to rethink, and that's what we're starting to do. We're rethinking our book display by starting this conversation. So thank you very much for listening today.